What's up everybody, Skyler Dean here, founder of Reach Fat Loss and Fitness, where our goal is to help you get in the best shape of your life, build muscle, burn fat, and do it all without the terrible calorie counting, without spending all your time on a treadmill or doing any torturous cardio, and without sucky dieting. And today we are going to be doing a very short and sweet 10 minute kettlebell workout that's going to help you out with some back pain. Now before we get into it, not only am I putting out workout videos like this geared to get you in the best shape of your life, but we're putting out new videos every single week. And so if you're not subscribed to the channel, make sure to subscribe. And if you are looking for fat loss help, make sure you check the free training in the description of this video that lays out exactly what we do and why it's so effective. And you also have the opportunity there to book a call with myself to see if working together would be a good fit. So the workout today is going to be 10 minutes. It's going to be four exercises. And what I care more about the weight you use during these exercises is the form that you use. Now the weight matters, right? Because if you're using something that's way too heavy, you're probably going to end up hurting yourself more. But I'm going to assume you're using a smart weight, one that you can control. And in today's workout, we want to make sure that your form is dialed in because doing an exercise with poor form will not only lead you to not get the best benefits out of the exercise, but it can also lead to you hurting yourself more. So today we're going to do four simple exercises. So I'm going to lead you through those four exercises right now. So those four exercises are going to be the kettlebell swing. We're going to do a Romanian deadlift with the kettlebell. We're going to do a Jefferson curl without the kettlebell. And then we're going to do a single leg deadlift. Now here's the deal. I want to thoroughly explain each exercise and use form. If you're an expert on this form, or maybe you've done this workout before and you're just looking to get to the workout, I'll put a timestamp right there with the time that you can skip ahead to in order to get started with the workout. With that being said, let's get into the form. Now, kettlebell swings, very straightforward here. You want a shoulder width stance. You want your toes pointed out. I do have an in-depth video on the kettlebell form. So if you really want to dial it in, make sure you check that out. But super simple, you are driving with your hips. So don't worry as much about coming straight down. You're more worrying about sticking your butt back. So from a swing perspective, shoulder width, toes pointed out, you want the kettlebell to stay close to your groin. So you don't want to be coming all the way down here and then thrust those hips as if you're just humping the air. You want to squeeze your glutes. You don't want to lock out your knees. Very, very simple. Now, depending on your level of back pain, you can do a much less exaggerated. You keep your chest more up. The amount that you're going to hinge is depending on the pain. You don't want to experience pain over honestly one or two at this point. The next exercise we're going to do is going to be the Romanian deadlifts. Now I see people doing this wrong all the time. What's important to me here is that you keep a shoulder width stance, but you have your toes pointed forward. You can keep a slight bend in the legs. You don't have to lock out your knees. But what's most important here is that you are hinging your hips. So the hip hinge is something to learn. As you come down with the weight, I want you to picture there's a door behind you and you're slowly closing the door with your butt. So you'll stick your butt back. Now this really today, because I'm pretty sore, is the only range of motion that I have. What most people make the mistake of doing is once they hit that range of motion where their hamstrings are as tight as possible, they come down further. This is going to use your back. This is going to contribute to even more back pain. So you want to make sure that you're only using the hinge. And when you hit the end of that hinge, when your butt is shot back as far as it can go and your hamstrings are tight, then you can drive the hips up and squeeze. So down, up, keep that chest up. Just like that. Again, when I hit that point, I'm not gonna calm down. I'm not worried about the range of motion here. I just wanna find the spot where I can get tight and then come on up. So that's a Romania deadlift. Next is gonna be a Jefferson curl. Now today, I'm actually gonna use the kettlebell when I do these Jefferson curls, unless I start to notice a little fatigue in my back. Typically, I'm doing these with anywhere from 45 to about 95 pounds, 95 being a very, very careful movement. I want you, especially if you're a beginner, to start off with no weight at all. So the Jefferson curl is a very simple way to strengthen and stretch the back, the hamstrings, basically your entire posterior chain. Very, very simple setup, same exact stance as the Romanian deadlift. So shoulder width apart with the feet, toes pointing straight forward. All you're going to do is instead of hinging and keeping your back straight, I want you to bend your back. Now it sounds counterintuitive, but what we're doing here is we're creating stability in moments of instability. So we're strengthening in those vulnerable positions. So first and foremost, you wanna tuck your chin. You can keep your arms hanging. Again, if you don't wanna use a full kettlebell weight, you can grab a cat, you can grab a water bottle. You can grab anything else that's not crazy heavy, but that you can use for a little added extra weight. Today, we're not gonna worry about it as I show you. And so all you're gonna do is let those arms hang. You're gonna tuck that chin and then work on vertebrae by vertebrae coming down. Now you're gonna find a sticking point. So as you come, you're gonna to start to feel some tightness in your back, upper back, and then you're gonna have that hamstring tightness. Now, you don't need to lock out the knees here, but don't make sure you're not bending them as you drop down. You can keep a slight bend, but keep that slight bend in place. If you wanna lock out your knees, that's okay as long as you're not using a ton of weight. So again, tuck the chin, vertebrae by vertebrae, come down. Keeping those knees pointed forward, those toes pointed forward, finding that sticking point, 
I can't go any further than this right now. I'm not warm. As I warm up, I'll be able to get a little lower. And then pushing into the ground with your feet to roll up. And that's one. Down. Two. Just like that. And then the last exercise is going to be the single leg deadlift. So again, you can do this without weight or you can do this with weight. Basically what you're going to do is you're going to have one foot off the ground. I really encourage you, especially if you're not very athletic or you don't have a lot of balance, to use a wall for support. So if I'm keeping the right foot on the ground, I'm going to have my left hand on the wall. I'm going to have the weight in the right hand. Or again, you can just do body weight. And you're practicing the same hinge that you use with the Romanian deadlift. So you're sticking your butt back. And again, you're going to have that point where you can't go any further with this. You don't want to be dropping the back. So. Shoot back, come up, shoot back, come up, and then when you're done, you obviously want to switch sides, you want to hit the same amount of reps on that side, come up. I am sore today, so excuse me not being as intense as I possibly can. <laughs> so that's it, so today, setting the timer for 10 minutes, we're doing 10 kettlebell swings, we're doing 10 Romanian deadlifts, we're doing five Jefferson curls, and then we're gonna do 10 single leg deadlifts, so five on each side. So again, 10 swings, 10 Romanian deadlifts, five Jefferson curls, and then five single leg deadlifts on each side. So grab your weight that you're gonna use, grab some water, and with that being said, let's get into it. So the goal of these 10 minutes is to get as many rounds as you can. Now, of course, you don't want to rush, but basically break as many times as you need. If you need to catch your breath, catch your breath, but the goal is to just consistently move through it. I'm gonna grab my phone here and set this timer. We got 10 minutes on the board. So I got my timer set. And with that being said, we're gonna get started in five, four, three, two, one. You go at your own pace. Jefferson curl, hit it from the side so you can see it. Five single leg deadlifts. And you could, can play around with what hand you hold the kettlebell in. If you want to play around with putting it on the opposite hand from the leg, that's fine as well.
break, hit some five Jeffersons. Done. We are almost halfway there. Keep it up, come on. Keep good form, that's the most important part. We gotta take a break, take a break. Yes, this will get your heart rate up, but it doesn't have to. It's not the goal of this, so if you need to take your time, even if you just hit one round of each movement, it's only gonna help you. You just gotta make sure you're using good form. Only focus on those hips during this movement. Just shoot the butt back, that's all I care about. And grabbing the weight here, that's okay. Make sure it's light enough for you to handle. Listen to your body. If it's telling you you need a break, take a break. Take a break and take 10 seconds. Why not? I'm feeling it in my back in a good way. And again, I don't want to overextend. We got a little over two minutes left. Let's go. Probably got time for one more round. Let's make it happen. Thank you.
Alright, 20 seconds, come on, finish up strong. Finish the round you're on, let's go. Come on, five seconds. Awesome job, great work. Take a second, catch your breath. You need to finish up, obviously finish up. But keep in mind, I'm feeling it. I'm a little sore, but it's a good sore. You have to be able to distinguish if something is a good sore for it to actually hurting you. And so yes, you may be feeling it a little extra now, but just give your body some rest and see how you feel tomorrow. You might be a little sore tomorrow as well, but as long as you're utilizing good form, you're stretching and you're strengthening everything in the posterior chain which is gonna help you with your back. So with that being said, thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you for the time. Again, if you're looking for more ways to simplify the process of getting healthy, if you're looking for help on your fat loss journey, check out the free training in the description of this video. Or if you're just looking to tune in, we're putting out new videos every single week, so make sure you subscribe. But with that being said, great work. Give yourself a round of applause. And of course, as always, make sure to eat smart, move more, sleep deep, and be grateful for this moment. I'll see you in the next video.